No matter how much you try to reach out to help them, if there is no will to change on their side, your efforts will have no effect. As Epictetus taught, it is our reactions, not the events themselves, that shape our feelings. Your constant willingness to help others is a rare quality these days. However, it is essential to understand that even with the best intentions, in some situations, if someone is not genuinely inclined to change, that transformation will not take place no matter how much help is offered. Before you invest your time and effort in situations that may be difficult to resolve, I invite you to stay with us, as this video will provide useful advice relating to clear indicators that may signal that you are facing challenging situations. We'll explore nine types of people who, for various reasons, often choose to face their own problems rather than seek outside help. Before going on to number one, make sure you're already subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any life-changing knowledge. 1. People expect the world to favor them. Some people have the idea that the world should fulfill their every wish and consider themselves incredible simply for being alive. Stoic principles teach us to live in harmony with the world and with others, emphasizing that respect and rewards must be earned. Even if well-meaning people want to help these individuals see reality differently, they often don't welcome this guidance and may even feel threatened. Some believe that, because of their attractive appearance, others should do things for them. This attitude can create challenges for those who are willing to help, as they often tend to exploit the generosity of others. Some individuals develop the belief that they deserve special treatment when things don't go as planned, and even when they receive help, they may express resentment and try to manipulate the situation in their favor. This can make interacting with them challenging, as reciprocity and gratitude are often absent. Generally, it is only when these people are confronted with behavior similar to what they have been demonstrating that they begin to realize the need for change. It is often necessary for them to experience firsthand the difficulties their selfish attitude creates for others before they recognize the importance of acting in a more compassionate and cooperative way. Patience and understanding can be essential when dealing with people who have this pattern of behavior, as change is often a gradual and internal process. 2. People who never admit their mistakes. These individuals avoid acknowledging their mistakes, which shows a lack of self-reflection and humility, qualities that are considered fundamental for personal development by philosophers such as the Stoics. This type of person rarely takes responsibility for their mistakes and instead prefers to blame other circumstances or individuals. Instead of reflecting before acting, they act impulsively, often without considering how their actions affect others. When things don't go according to plan, they point the finger of accusation at something or someone, but rarely at themselves. Dealing with people who believe that their choices don't affect others or who simply don't care about the consequences of their actions can be incredibly challenging. Helping them often proves to be a difficult task as they are rarely willing to acknowledge their mistakes or take responsibility for them. When the negative consequences of their decisions manifest themselves, it's common to hear them refuse to accept any blame, often using the phrase, I'm not to blame. If you are hoping to be able to teach them humility and thus bring about changes in their behavior, be aware that you are facing a considerable challenge. These people tend to have a habit of blaming other people or circumstances whenever things go wrong for them, which makes it even more difficult to influence a positive change in their way of acting. It is therefore essential to consider how to deal with this type of personality effectively in order to preserve your own well-being. 3. People involved in self-created illusions. There are people who get involved in fictional narratives they create about themselves. This behavior goes against the stoic principle of self-examination and sincerity. It's like hiding problems under the carpet. The stoics teach that we must face our mistakes and challenges in order to grow. The big obstacle with these people is that they are so invested in their fictional stories that they ignore the reality perceived by others around them. They don't understand that our minds can distort the truth, seeing things based on our emotions rather than how they really are. Often, they don't intend to harm but are trapped in a habit of deceiving themselves. This pattern may have its roots in a difficult childhood, and the longing to belong may have influenced their perspective. These obstacles may have led them to construct a comforting reality for themselves. Helping them is a complicated task, since they have erected sturdy mental barriers around themselves. You can try to persuade them that the earth is round, but they will stubbornly argue that it is flat. 
even when clear evidence is presented, they distort the facts to fit their perspective. Genuine change will only occur when they recognize that their thinking is wrong, and this often requires expert psychological guidance. This situation makes us reflect on current political debates in which many people remain loyal to their ideologies, even in the face of logical flaws. Even when they contradict themselves, they still believe they are right. This highlights the challenge of dealing with those who resist profound changes in their way of thinking and the importance of approaching these issues with understanding and patience. 4. People who think it's never their fault. These people have a habit of blaming everyone else and rarely do any self-reflection. This attitude contradicts the idea that we should focus on how we react to situations rather than blaming the situations themselves. When we don't take control of our own reactions, our emotions can overwhelm us, leaving us perplexed. The question is, how can you help someone who constantly blames others for their problems without ever acknowledging their own mistakes? If they can't identify where they might be going wrong, they won't feel motivated to improve themselves because they believe they are already the best version of themselves. Some people have a habit of constantly blaming others, often because they are unable to recognize their own mistakes or simply choose to ignore them. For these people, a lack of friends is always the fault of others, a lack of good health is blamed on the high cost of healthy food, and a lack of employment is justified by the supposed lack of interest on the part of interviewers. Helping these people can be a challenge, as they are often resistant to recognizing their own shortcomings. An effective approach to dealing with this situation is to let life be their teacher. Over time, as they face the consequences of their attitudes, they may begin to realize the real challenges they face. It is important to remember that each person is responsible for their own choices and actions, and we cannot force someone to see reality if they are not willing to do so. Therefore, Patience and detachment can be useful strategies when dealing with people who constantly blame others for their difficulties. 5. Opportunists Deeply understanding the feelings of others is a rare and admirable quality. The Stoics valued empathy, the act of feeling other people's emotions without passing judgment. However, it's important to be wary of those who exploit this kindness. Some people see empathy as a weakness and feign friendship just to take advantage. How can you spot them? Observe their actions. True friends ask for help when they are truly in need, while these people often ask for regular favors, even for situations they could solve themselves. Some know how to make you feel guilty. Initially, they might say, you're a great friend. Can you help me with this? It's fine to ask for help from time to time, but these people ask constantly, even when they have the ability to manage on their own. They repeatedly show indifference to your time and obligations. This is unfortunate because even when you don't want to or can't help, you often end up giving in to their demands. These people make a point of making you feel guilty if you refuse their requests, making the interaction stressful. Even after countless times when you have extended your help, they don't show any change in behavior, maintaining the belief that there will always be someone available to help them. In this scenario, the recommendation is that you choose to distance yourself from these people, preserving your mental health and well-being. Remember that the priority should be taking care of yourself and maintaining the commitments and responsibilities you have made. This is not selfish, but rather a way of protecting your own quality of life and establishing healthy boundaries in your personal relationships. Opportunistic people try to dominate us and make decisions for us. So we have to do as the Stoics did and control our minds and master our emotions so as not to fall into the traps of anxiety, pain and agony. For this, we've left a link in the first comment to help you deal with these problems and shield your mind in today's world. 6. Those who are stuck on the negative aspects of life. There are people who have a habit of seeing the negative side of situations, unlike the ancient sages, such as the Stoics, who valued serenity and faced challenges with courage and gratitude. It is essential to recognize both the ups and downs of life in order to maintain a healthy mental balance. Although everyone has difficult days and experiences feelings of anger or sadness, it's another thing when someone focuses exclusively on the negative aspects, neglecting the good parts of life. This focus only serves to amplify the sadness and obscure the beauty of the world around them. Some individuals seem to be experts at focusing on the negative and helping them can become a challenging task. When they share their problems, it's natural to want to offer solutions but they always seem to find a new problem for every answer you give. 
Their constant negativity can start to affect your own mood, similar to watching the news on television, where most of the news is about unfavorable events. After offering various suggestions, you begin to question whether they really want help or whether they prefer to simply complain and draw attention to themselves. They often feel uncomfortable if all their problems suddenly disappeared because they enjoy having this complex mix of challenges to discuss. They always seem to be immersed in conversations about their difficulties as if that's what life is all about. They talk incessantly about lack of money, problems with their children, disagreements in relationships and dissatisfaction at work. Do you really think you can make a difference in the life of someone who constantly complains about every area of their existence and yet still seeks help? Perhaps it's wiser to avoid trying. In order to remain optimistic and energetic, it may be more effective to allow this person to find their own way. Hopefully, over time, they will learn to adopt a less negative attitude. Instead, focus your energy on those who genuinely value your advice and want to evolve. Otherwise, you run the risk of becoming as negative as the person you tried to help without realizing it. 7. People who don't want to learn or change Stoicism invites us to explore introspection and seek constant personal improvement. However, some people resist examining their defects and evolving. They choose to remain the same, often blaming others for their adversities. Offering help to these people can be a challenge, as they tend to close themselves off to others' guidance. For example, we have John, who never admits a mistake, even in the face of clear evidence, always finding a scapegoat. Judith, in the workplace, receives constructive feedback to improve her performance but prefers to ignore it, believing that her approach is always the best. James faces recurring problems in his relationships, but insists that the lack of the right person is to blame without evaluating his own behavior. Lauren, on the other hand, when faced with financial challenges, chooses to blame her job for not paying her enough instead of considering saving money. On certain occasions, it is more beneficial to allow these people to find their own solutions without the need for detailed guidance at every step. Stoicism reinforces to us the importance of tuning into the harmony of nature, building solid relationships and taking responsibility for our actions. By adopting these principles in our journey, we are able to pursue a life rich in meaning, harmonized with the universe. 8. People who only think about themselves. Some people are so self-centered that they tend to believe that the universe revolves around them. For example, imagine that you are discussing the issue of poor security in your city. Individuals of this type might say, security isn't a problem, simply because they haven't experienced any problems in this regard. And when you share good news, such as a new job, they manage to divert their attention from your joy and focus on how dissatisfied they are with their job. They seem to absorb your happiness and exchange it for their own challenges. From then on, even though you should be in the spotlight, these friends end up taking control of the conversation. The current situation seems to revolve entirely around the other person's feelings, as if what you think or feel is considered irrelevant. In this context, you need to reflect on your willingness to continue to be there for someone who shows exclusive concern for themselves. The key question is whether you feel confident enough to approach them and ask them to consider the perspective of others and act more empathically. However, it is essential to remember that even if you try to help someone become a better person, change can only occur if they are truly willing to transform themselves. But if you are committed to your own growth and you notice that the people around you maintain a negative attitude that can hinder your progress, it may be advisable to consider distancing yourself from these relationships in order to preserve your emotional well-being and continue your quest for personal growth. 9. People who don't plan ahead Imagine observing a loved one who doesn't make full use of their talents and not having the ability to change that. It's challenging when you try to emphasize how quickly life goes by, but the person seems indifferent. You believe that this person has greater potential than they realize. Yes, living in the present is important for happiness, but that doesn't mean we should neglect our goals for the future. What we do today contributes to shaping our tomorrow. We experience a real sense of contentment when we apply our natural and acquired abilities to enhance our existence. Some people have diverse aptitudes, yet their vision is often limited to the present. It's not a question of a lack of skills, it's a question of not considering how to apply them in the future. They have a range of talents. 
The most effective way to help them is not by teaching them new skills, but by motivating them to use the ones they already have. Often, these people just need action. They are fully aware of their potential and what they can achieve, but if they continue to constantly depend on others and don't act on their own, it will be a challenge to inspire them to grow. Remaining in this state of dependence prevents them from moving forward. Ancient philosophers valued the idea of actively working to improve one's life. Otherwise, negative emotions can take over. Anxiety, an emotion that affects many people today, is an example of this. We have to keep these people in mind that we should deny their requests and live with our heads free of these problems. However, there are other types of people that we should definitely stop living with. Click on the video and see who these eight types of people are.